uh, hello everybody. I have uh, decided to do this video uh, just to show some things about caster level and uh, you know spell powers and everything else uh, mostly to show as a DPS caster um what's possible in the game or or better yet just to do an explainer again on caster level uh versus damage dealt i guess is the best way to explain it so i went out to the cogs and i I completely stripped down this uh, character here uh, just to do this this video. Um, if I open up the inventory page, the only thing that I'm wearing right now uh, on my character is the the Revelers regalia, which comes from. The Maybar Festival, which or the Night Revels Festival, which is on right now, and anybody can go get this, or a number of them, if you have so many uh, tunes that you don't know, caster tunes that you don't know what to do with, you know. But I did it just to show um, uh, the level of the spell. Uh, in relation to what you're casting when you add certain items to your character. Now, uh, Yafu is just a uh, fifth life character. It's a uh, wizard 14, or wait, wizard 6, warlock 14 mix. That I believe uh, was uh, on this life just just going for light damage and no, it's force and fire. I am in the fiend pact for this one. So this is going to be a little bit, I guess, out of the box thinking, but I think it's necessary to do. Like, if, right, I don't even, um, all right, I guess the disclaimer is I'm not the end all and be all of this uh, game, and I don't make characters that, uh, you know, uh, have all the answers for everything that goes on. Uh, I've only done uh, characters that were trying to get the biggest hits registered uh, ever, you know, in, for a personal goal. You know, I don't read a lot of the forums or or keep up with this build or X build or, or whatever else. So you're still, you know, if you were a beginner, I guess that's more of where I'm gearing this towards. If you don't like math and you don't like uh, sitting through and waiting or, and you want to see an extreme action video, you, you should just quit watching right now. But I had run tests uh, like this uh, before to see what worked with what else. Like if I start at a, at a zero, uh, zero meaning, yeah, I'm level 30. Um, but I didn't have any gear or anything to boost any types of spells or anything like that. I would get a reading in my combat log that reflected exactly what my caster level was. And caster level is what I guess basically also, it helps with your damage output per spell, but it has a maximum on spells that you cast if you are just a pure 
uh, wizard, sorcerer, or whatever kind of cast your life. You know, there's items in the game that boost that up uh, for you, depending on what your class is. And then a lot of those evocation spells that you cast gain a damage bonus depending on if they make a save and the caster level. So this is like, uh, it's it's sort of a, an old experiment for me, but I, I think I got to do it again just to show what what is going on so that people know it. Um, you know, a lot of times in the questing now in DDO, at lesser d difficulty levels, a uh, caster can just go blast right through, and you'll never get a reading on what has to actually, or what occurred. I don't know. I just decided to do this video just to show again. The base stats right here, bare naked at level 30, are are pretty, you know, it's pretty generic. It's uh, a fire spell power of 298, a light spell power of 288. The basic chances for spell critical chance are all at 7, but the spell critical multiplier is at 90. Um, this comes from, uh, being a warlock right down here, uh, the Tainted Scholar tree is giving you something in here, 30% total right now with my 14 levels of Warlock. She has a Tainted Lore and Tainted Lore again at level 3. I think that's where the 30 is coming from. Or 30% of that 90. The other thing is coming in from Feats. Uh, what is it? Epic Packs? Life Feats? No. Uh, Skyon of, of Arborea? No. Fire. Skyon of Fire is another 25. If I can find it. Skyon of the Plate of Fire is a 25. That pushes that up to 55 out of the, out of that 90. And then the last one I think is coming from Epic Destinies. Draconic at the bottom. 5% per tier down here or per thingy. Okay, so that's a normal number, right? That's something that anybody can attain for their spell critical multiplier. There are items in the game like uh, Ender Set or uh, Shroud Set that'll add another 35 on top of that. I don't have that yet on this character. It's only a fifth lifer. And then clickies, you if you are a caster, a DPS caster, Wellspring of Power will give you 20%. Um, some other things in here, if you have the, 
that Reveler's Regalia will also give you another 25% on top of that spell critical multiplier for a short time. So if I just stand here and I watch the, and, I, and I'm ready on my number bar there, and I click the Wellspring of Power, you'll see that number jump to 110 on the Spell Critical Multiplier. See, that's what I'm getting at there, is there's a cycle before you want to do big damage. It's almost like the same sort of cycle of clickies um, that I run as a melee uh, before I go in and, and start, you know, wailing away. Wellspring of Power only lasts for 30 seconds. No big a deal. Now, I have not addressed... Uh, spell caster level yet um, just because I don't know I got involved in that other thing there <laughs> the if I look at this spell magic missile which according to spells is only a level one spell uh, by base damage, it says for every two caster levels beyond first level, you gain an additional miss missile up to a maximum of five missiles. For every two caster levels beyond first level, and there's no save on it. If I look at just a normal Burning Hands, which is a level one spell, it says um, a cone of searing flame shoots forth damaging targets in the area of the flames for two to seven fire damage per caster level up to a max of 10 to 35 at caster level 5. A successful reflex save reduces the damage by half. It's an evocation spell. And it also says that it's a reflex save based on that evocation spell. If, you know, I'm reading that right, this means that Burning Hands has a maximum up to 35 at caster level 5. What? There's a maximum that it can only be at at caster level 5? Or it's a maximum level 35? You know, I, these are questions that I had to ask because it's worded so wrong. Flaming Bolt is a level one spell. Up to a maximum of 30 to 80 at Kessler level 10. So is that the maximum level? I don't know. So I went out here a couple years ago and I just ran tests. In a common area, you can cast a spell blank. Like, I don't have anything. I'm not wearing anything to raise caster level of fire spells. So I just cast it. And it won't let me cast unless I target a mob. So. Before I can prepare spells, oh, I gotta cast it from my from my <laughs> thing here. Duh, that's hilarious. So I'll just cast it. 
you begin to cast Flaming Bolt at level 15. I've opened up the combat log as a base, just to show. That's what it's showing it at. You begin to cast Flaming Bolt at level 15. Okay. Burning Hands, you begin to cast Burning Hands at level 15. Uh, fireball, you begin to cast Fireball at level 15. Okay, so now it's like there's a base level on those spells right now that I'm at personally. I have Empowered, Heightened, Intensified, Maximized, and Quickened those spells. But Heightened it's going to raise it to the maximum caster level of this character to begin with. So if I go back to spells, it says I can only cast level 3 spells base. All the rest of those other 12 levels there are coming from uh, however they divide out the spell total of your base. Uh, with this Munt build. I'm a 14 Warlock. I'm a 6 Wizard. So, 10 plus caster level plus whatever else. That gets you to 13. At least. And then plus 2 for whatever, whatever it is. You know, that math, I don't care about so much. What I care about is raising this past its past its prime. You know, uh, higher caster level, more damage. Possible. Next. Epic Destinies. I am in the fire, uh, Epic Destiny. You already know that the bottom has given you the 5% spell critical damage with all spells. And per tier on the bottom, it's given you plus one to your Warlock, Wizard, Sorcerer, Bard, Alchemist, and Artificer uh, caster levels. If you have any levels in the class. Okay. So you look at that and you go, all right. That probably means. I should be getting more caster levels on those base level one spells. Right? I mean, that's easy. That that push you per tier up to five over what that thing is right but all those spells have a maximum caster level whereas the Dr draconic incarnation uh casting doesn't have a maximum caster level associated with it and here's where it gets nuts Right here, hovering over the Dragon Breath without any gear. I don't know what the caster level is until I cast it, but the save is already way high. It's already at 54 on its reflex. The energy burst is already at 54 on its thing. So... Why don't we just see what the base caster level is on those? They're not spells. They came from just being in your epic destiny. So I do it. I'll cast that energy burst. Holy man. You begin to cast energy bursts at level 39. Like, whoa, back up a second. What? Level 39 in comparison to a level 15 spell is a big difference. 
That's a big jump. Right? What does this say on it? Waves of fire emanate from your body, dealing 1d15 plus 15 per character level fire damage to enemies in your vicinity. Okay, that's per character level. That's not per spell level. Right? It doesn't say there's no maximum on this. All right, I will put in at the end of this video a maximum caster level amount because it's important. It's important for the amount of damage per spell that you can possibly attain in the game. Scorching Ray. Still casting that at 15. The number of rays increased by one ray for every four levels beyond third to a maximum of three rays at 11. See, it's got a maximum. I've exceeded the maximum on the spell level for those spells. Whereas on the Draconic Destiny, I don't, there's no end to it. All these three. All right. So running a test based on these theories. Based on uh, maximizing what your caster can do with the spells that it has available. I go, all right. Then why is it such a big deal to put, to have items with caster level on it? I have a leg legendary Firestorm Conduit, and you can see Arcane Augmentation 9. This item increases your caster level when casting 1st through ninth level Sorcerer or Wizard spells by 2. So, I'll equip it. Now... As the only item that's on, I'll cast those same things and see what comes up in the combat log, right? We'll see if it's going to still raise that up higher. You begin to cast Magic Missile at level 14. What? You begin to cast Flaming Bolt at 17. Burning hands at 17. All right, won't let me, won't let me cast uh, magic missiles. Invalid target. You begin to cast fireball at 17. Hmm. Why does it matter? There's a maximum. There's a maximum that can be attained on all those spells according to the wiki list. However, Dragon Breath, uh, I know already, the save went up to 66 on it. Energy Burst went up to 66, and we'll just see. 41. There you go. You begin to cast Energy Burst at level 41. Next, I'm going to equip uh, all five pieces of the Chronoscope set. And with the bonus of that Chronoscope set, it says uh, plus three, you know, natural armor, profane, strength. But then it says, plus three bonus to your caster level on evocation spells. When all five pieces are equipped, 
you get a plus three caster level on your evocation and conjuration spells. A lot of conjuration spells are acid. Uh, acid Sork. Um, Cloud Kill. Web. You know. Just to see. And then we'll run the test again. We'll run to see if that evocation which is what the Dragon Breath is, what Magic Missiles is, what Scorching Ray is, what all those spells basically are. You know, Everd's Black Tentacles as a, as a Warlock is a Conjuration School. I'll just cast that just to see what that's at before we put on that set. Not aiming at anything. Didn't give me a, give me anything in the in the combat log. Only those those evocation things are showing up. See that? That's crazy. Well, come on, DDO. Monster has to get a save in it before it'll show me. That's wacky. All right, let's run our test. Okay, all five pieces on. Shows the notification in the corner. Epic Chronoscope, a nice level 20 set, you know. And then we'll just do those again. Whoa! You begin to class Flaming Bolt at level 20. That means that both items are stacking. Burning Hand, 20. Scorching Ray is 20. Fireball at level 20. I wonder what the level is going to be on that. On those awesome, super awesome epic destinies. Energy Burst. Energy Burst went up to 44. Red Dragon Breath at 44. They're all the same. So there you go. Five levels higher than what the actual starting point was. Something cool. That's cool. Now, it's easier to do this on... On cold and fire, uh, just because of the items that have been released previously in the game. Uh, one of them that I do not have is a red dragon um, helm from Vaughn 6. I think it gives you a plus three uh, to the caster level of your fire spells. Uh, which stacks with this set and augmentation uh, items. The other is a uh, lesser known uh, epic item for cold is this, uh, this thing from the, uh, the Sentinels of Storm Range chain. Uh, some kind of thing, a Winter's Wrath will upgrade your cold spells that way. Now, why it's important is if you were cold spec, even as a warlock, now you can do that. Um, it's great for this new raid, too hot to handle. Like,
you know, cold is, it's, it's gone so far out of favor in the game, unless you're a druid, you know, that, uh, just, it is what it is. So, knowing that, and being undergeared, not even wearing all my items, I've raised the caster level. My spell power is up now uh, with the quarterstaff to, you know, still a paltry 565, light 341, and force 384. My electric spell critical chance went up to 39. My fire went up to 39, and the rest are still at 7. The multiplier is the same. Still at 90 with the base. No clickies. You still have to roll a spell crit to get a chance to use this bottom tier. You know, as this spell goes off, you got to make sure that the mob fails whatever save for evil. And then you also got to get a roll for a spell crit. What am I? I'm hovering right at around 40%. And then the spell critical multiplier will go off if those two things happen. So, again, this all works in conjunction with you, you know, being able to roll that crit. Sometimes having them fail a save and then your big damage numbers come up. Not like it just happens magically. You still got to do the work to get evil high enough. So there you go. That shows your levels. You know, some characters I run combat logs just to check. Check to see what happened. You'll also get a reading here after you get a big hit or it will say X spell has a greater effect. There's a percentage chance based on your critical. I hope that helps people understand those levels. Thank you. And have a good evening.